today I'm going to be reviewing the PSVR 2 headset. PSVR 2 has just launched, so let's get right into it. To begin with, you need a PS5 in order to play PSVR 2. This is not a standalone headset like the MetaQuest 2, and you need to be able to connect to a PS5 in order to play. First things first, the headset costs a whopping £529.99. Pair that with the cost of a PS5, which is £479.99, and you're spending well over a grand before you've even considered any games for this headset. The first thing you'll notice about this headset is the design. It matches the aesthetic of the PS5 console and controllers, so it'll blend in really nicely. It has that signature all-white look, and it's still hard shell plastic on the outside to make sure that it still stays lightweight. When putting the headset on, you're able to adjust both the goggles at the front and the head strap at the back, so you can get the perfect fit for you. This made the headset so much more comfortable to use, even for long periods of time. You really get that perfect snug fit made just for you. It is a front heavy device considering all of the hardware is packed into the goggles, but you don't really feel it when you have the headset on your head. This is a stark contrast to my MetaQuest 2 where you can literally feel the weight of the headset at the front and it really pulls down even when you have it strapped on tightly. Around the edges of the goggles you get this really nice blackout rubber which it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all when you're wearing the headset and stops all of that outside light from coming in, making sure you have a really immersive gameplay experience. It's worth noting that the headset connects via a USB-C cable to your PlayStation 5, however the cable's not detachable from the actual headset itself. This means you have the benefit of the wire not coming unplugged from your headset while you're in the middle of playing, but it also means that if the cable gets damaged, you're kind of on your own here. Now let's talk about the design of these controllers. Sony, what on earth is going on here? No, but honestly, these controllers are pretty cool. They're a bit of a different design compared to other VR controllers, but they're still comfortable to hold and they give you access to all of the buttons that you need. And the massive ring that sits around your wrist, you can't feel it at all when you're playing. You obviously get two controllers, one for each hand. Between both controllers, you have the same number of inputs as you do on a regular PS5 DualSense controller, except from the directional D-pad. The controllers also contain capacitive sensors, meaning that they can sense when your hand is pointing or in a fist without you even having to press a button. Enough of the controllers, I know why you guys are here, the headset itself. First things first, the features on this headset are outstanding. You get OLED displays instead of the regular LED displays that you find on like the MetaQuest 2 and PSVR 1. And this makes for truer blacks and more vivid colors, which feels amazing and really gets you immersed. The panel resolution is 2000 by 2040 per eye, which is slightly higher than the MetaQuest 2. And on top of that, the panel's refresh rates are between 90 and 120 hertz. Both of these factors combined made for a VR experience that was absolutely incredible and I didn't get motion sick. Now anyone that knows me knows I'm a very very motion sicky person. I get eye strain and headaches when I'm playing VR all the time which is a bit ironic for someone who's a massive VR enthusiast, right? But honestly, PSVR 2 was great. I didn't find myself getting that usual motion sickness that I get as soon as I do with other VR headsets. This headset also comes with eye tracking, which is insane. I haven't ever used eye tracking before, so genuinely, when I was able to set it up, it felt like I had been transported into the future. The tracking on the headset is fantastic. You get four embedded cameras around the outer shell of the console. These are only black and white cameras though, so you're not really going to get that immersion when you're using augmented reality, and it's more just for setting up playthrough and of course tracking. The headset also contains a six axis motion sensing system and an IR proximity sensor. This obviously contributed to the amazing tracking on the headset. Genuinely, no matter what movement you make, the headset will pick up on it. Whether that's you kneeling down, just moving your hand ever so slightly, looking around, whatever it is, the headset will pick it up, which is amazing. Now, being a glasses wearer, VR is particularly difficult for me. Certain headsets say that they're glasses friendly, but they're just not. They feel uncomfortable to wear, you're constantly shrubbing your fingers in and adjusting your glasses on the inside, but I didn't get that at all with PSVR 2. As soon as I placed the headset on my head, that was that. I didn't have to fiddle around with it anymore, I didn't have to constantly move my glasses around while I was playing the game, I was just content. This was genuinely revolutionary for me as a glasses wearer, and it made for such a comfortable experience. I also find that with other VR headsets, my glasses can get foggy on the inside after I've been playing for a while, obviously from how hot I'm getting from moving around a lot. However, with PSVR 2, that didn't happen at all. I think the headset lets in enough air that this just doesn't occur. 
Something that sounded a little bit gimmicky to me at first was the fact that the headset vibrates. Now, I'm all for controllers vibrating, but headsets vibrating just sounds weird. But this was actually done really, really well and helped with the level of immersion so deeply. Genuinely, I actually dropped to my knees when I heard a storm bird flying over my head in Horizon's Call of the Mountains because I could feel the vibrations through the headset and it just felt so real. However, unfortunately, the headset does come with its negatives too. First things first, there are no inbuilt speakers. There is an audio jack on the back though where you have to plug in these stereo headphones. Now, honestly, these headphones are not for me. They're great in sound quality and really help with that immersion because they provide you with surround sound, but they are so uncomfortable. I tried to swap around the buds on the earpieces themselves to find a size that suited me, but none of them felt comfortable to me at all. Honestly, this was really disappointing for the price of this headset considering the MetaQuest 2 is cheaper and has built-in 3D speakers. Of course, you can still use the audio that comes through your TV or monitor speakers, but you're not gonna get that same level of immersion as you are from 3D speakers on the headset itself. While I was playing, I felt more discomfort from the earbuds than I even did from the headset and the lenses. And in the end, it was always the reason I had to stop my play session earlier than I wanted to, just because of how uncomfortable my ears felt. However, I will admit this is a nice change of pace from having to stop my play sessions because I literally feel so unwell from motion sickness. Just saying. I also found myself missing the ability to be fully detached while using this headset. My main VR headset before getting my hands on this one was the MetaQuest 2, which is completely standalone and you don't ever need to be wired up to something else to be able to play. Whereas with PSVR 2, I now suddenly have to worry about a cable at all times. I constantly found myself having to move it over my shoulder, move it around along the floor, or just be wary of pulling my entire console off of my shelf if I made like a sharp movement. You can never be fully into the game when you have these worries, which kind of lets this headset down. I do understand that this headset is geared more towards people who already own a PS5, but that for me is another downside. If you don't already have a PS5, you now have to worry about going out and getting one just to be able to use this headset. So overall, this headset really isn't perfect, but I'd say it's pretty close. I have absolutely loved using this headset, and I can see myself using it as my main VR headset from now on. If I can get used to the K1 earbuds, that is. The picture quality on this headset is beautiful and the higher refresh rate is outstanding and it's really helped me get past my motion sickness when playing VR. If you already have a PlayStation 5 and a massive library of games, then you'll be glad to know that free patches are coming out for most of these games to be VR compatible. This means if you're thinking about picking up VR, then the PSVR 2 is probably the headset for you. It's really comfortable to use even for a long period of time, which has always been my barrier with virtual reality. I just always end up feeling uncomfortable after a while. I also never have any discomfort with my glasses, which is a really nice breath of fresh air. However, of course, it comes with its negatives. It costs more than the MetaQuest 2, despite not being standalone. It requires a wired connection to a console, and it doesn't even have any built-in speakers, and all of these just really let me down. For over £500, I wouldn't really be expecting to encounter any of these issues. It clearly does have a great performance upgrade, but some of the features are just missing. However, if you're not fussed about the headset being standalone and you don't mind having a wired connection to your console, then definitely go for it. This is an amazing headset and it really, really makes me feel excited for the world of VR moving forward. Overall, I would give PSVR 2 a lovely 4 stars out of 5. This has been Jasmine from the Mirror Gaming team. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you're interested in more hardware reviews, be sure to like and subscribe.